Hello everyone, welcome again to Modeling Methods in Mechanical Engineering and today we're going to talk about another special type of uh, uh, second order or an area differential equation with variable coefficients known as the Bessel equation or Bessel equation, I'm not sure what you want to pronounce it. And this is an equation that has very special meaning in engineering, uh, although it was uh, first proposed and discovered by a uh, German astronomer called Bessel. Actually, uh, the first uh, uh, derivation of these functions was made by Bernoulli, uh, but then it was generalized by Bessel in the 19th century, about halfway through the 19th century or 1830s. Um, um, and, and this equation actually appears in, in the separation of variables of many partial differential equations. And as we'll see, um, uh, we, we'll find it very commonly in the next portion of the semester when we try to analyze a heat equation or when we try to analyze the wave equation or when we try to analyze equations in cylindrical coordinate systems or even in spherical coordinate systems and we separate the coordinates, this equation will show up. So it's not, uh, it's not an equation that we try to analyze arbitrarily. It's just that it appears in many instances in many applications uh, of many problems are governed by uh, partial differential equations. So let's, uh, let's see how we can uh, solve this equation analytically. Um, using the methods that we have described so far, including the series expansion method and the Frobenius method that we discussed in the last class. So this is uh, modeling methods in EMI. And uh, we are going to talk about best cell equation of order nu. Okay, so the order of the equation is determined by this parameter nu, which I don't want to get into the details of where this parameter comes from, but that is going to be obvious when we uh, look at the heat equation, for example, in the next portion of the semester. So this equation looks like this. You see at first glance, it almost looks like the, uh, like the Euler-Cauchy equation. You have a second order polynomial, first order polynomial, but then it goes up to a second order polynomial again. And this determines the order of the equation this parameter nu. So this is a homogeneous version of the Bessel equation of order nu. Now what this, uh, what this equation again uh, tells you is it's a linear ordinary differential equation of second order and it's obviously uh, partial, uh, I'm sorry, uh, variable coefficient. So let's start by looking at the easiest and simplest case of, of this one which is the um, the Bessel equation of order nu equals zero. So order zero, then the equation will simply look like x squared, the second y, the x squared, plus x, the y, the x, plus, let's make this x squared y of x. Let's just um, omit the coefficient m, we will see exactly where that coefficient m appears when we generalize the solution of that equation. And this is the equation that was actually solved by Bernoulli, um, and he came up with the series solution of this equation. But then later on, because Bessel actually solved this equation for astronomical purposes, Bessel was an astronomer, actually the first person to, to use the parallax method to determine the uh, very accurate distance to stars in the galaxy. So basically use the the orbit of the Earth around the Sun to measure the position of stars and by looking at the angular difference between the two measurements he could by triangulation determine how far away that, that, that object is. That's the parallax method. Now if we rewrite this equation then we get, well, I'm going to rewrite it in the form of P and Q The equation looks like this, and as you can see, remember this is p of x, and this one right here, which the 1, is q of x. So p of x is equal to 1 over x, and q of x is equal to 1. So it looks like we have a singularity, singularity at x0 equals 0. So if we decide to expand with respect to this point on the power series, we would need to use the Frobenius method. But in order to, for the Frobenius method to apply, this will have to be 
a single singularity or one singularity essentially. So note that the limit as x goes to zero of x times px is equal to uh, the limit when x goes to zero of x times one over x, which is basically the x and the x cancel out. And it would be the limit when x goes to zero of one is one. So this is equal to the p minus one term on the on the series expansion. And it's non-singular as you can see. And also the limit when x goes to zero of x squared times qx is equal to the limit when x goes to zero of x squared times one. And that would just give you zero, which is also a finite number. So this is good. This is good because this is um, a finite number. So we remove the singularity by multiplying px times x by multiplying qx by x squared. So basically x zero is a regular singularity. So it applies. So we can we can apply for Benius method. And now if we can use p minus one and q minus two uh, in the initial equation. Okay, we've derived this initial equation last class plus k times uh, p minus one plus q minus two is equal to zero. So that's the initial e equation, which will give rise to the two k's. So remember this one right here for this particular equation is zero and this one is one. Follow up with these, we get uh, k, k minus 1 plus k is equal to 0, and therefore k squared minus k plus k is equal to 0, and therefore k squared is equal to 0, which means that k is plus minus 0, so k1 is equal to 0 and k2 is equal to 0. So we have repeated roots to the initial equation. So repeat it roots k1 k2 is equal to k which is equal to zero so basically what we're going to do is let y of x be equal to the summation from n equals zero to infinity of a n x n plus zero dy dx, the derivative of these, so this is k, as you can see, is equal to the summation from n equal 1 to infinity. Now, because this is an integer, so now the summation starts at 1. Um, so this will be a n times n, x to the n minus 1. And the second derivative of y with respect to x squared would be the summation from n equal 2 to infinity of a n times n times n minus 1 x to the n minus 2. So this in this particular case the Frobenius method collapses down to the regular power series method for the solution of ODEs. And all we have to do is plug this back into the ODE and try to find that recurrence rela relation for uh, the coefficients a n. So back to ODE. Remember the ODE looked like this. The original ODE, we're solving the order zero equation. So we're going to plug in the second, uh, the d square y dx square series here, the dy dx series here, and the yx series here. So those would be x squared times the summation from n equal 2 to infinity, a n, n, n minus 1, x to the n minus 2, plus x times the summation from n equal 1 to infinity, a n, n, x to the n minus 1, plus x squared times the summation from n equal 0 to infinity of a n, x to the n, is equal to 0. So that's how the differential equation looks like now. And then as you can see, we can just multiply these through. We can send this x squared inside the summation, and we get summation from n equal 2 
to infinity of a n n n minus 1 x to the n plus the summation from n equal 1 to infinity of a n n x to the n so the x multiply x to the n minus 1 gives you x to the n and then plus the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n plus 2 is equal to 0. So I am going to take out, I'm going to combine these two series, but in, and before I do that, I'm going to take out the first term of this series right here, so that both stars at n equal 2. So the first term of this series, when n is equal to 1, will be a1 times x. So a1 times 1 times x to the 1, a1 times x, plus the summation from n equal 2 to infinity of a n, in both cases, uh, multiplying n to the n minus 1 uh, plus n x to the n plus the summation, I'm going to leave this one alone, a n x to the n plus 2 is equal to 0. All right. So you can see that uh, this one here is n squared minus n, and the minus n and the n will go away. So I'm going to continue with this. This will be the summation from n equal 2 to infinity of a n uh, times n squared times x to the n plus the summation from n equal 0 to infinity a n times x to the n plus 2 is equal to 0. So I am going to let, let m be equals to n minus 2 and therefore n is equal to n plus 2. So if I do that, this will, this, I'm sorry, this uh, particular series will start at 0. Um, so I'm going to change the index here uh, to m equal n minus 2, so that this series starts at 0. This will be the coefficient n, n minus 2, I'm sorry, n plus 2. This will be n plus 2 squared, and this will be n plus 2. So kind of the same trick we use for the generalized um, power series method. So a1x plus a summation from m equals 0 to infinity of a m plus 2, m plus 2 squared, x to the m plus 2, plus a summation from n equals 0 to infinity, a n x to the m plus 2 is equal to 0. So now, as, I done, as I've done before, switch back from m to n so that they look alike. So I'm going to change this m to n now. It's just a change in notation. So this is n equals 0 to infinity, a n plus 2, n plus 2 square, x to the n plus 2 plus a summation uh, from n equals 0 to infinity, a n x to the n plus 2 is equal to 0. So now I have two series that start at 0, and they're both multiplying or, or, or having a, have a power uh, series of x to the n plus 2, so I can take that as a common factor. So this will be then 1 times x. plus the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of a n plus 2 times n plus 2 square plus a n times x to the n plus 2 is equal to 0. And there is my recurrence relation. The recurrence relationship basically says that if I equate the left and the right hand side of this equation, so whatever is multiplying x on the left has to multiply x on the right. So for a non-trivial solution, I know that a1, to begin with, has to be 0. So that's the first answer. Whatever multiplies x here is equal to whatever multiplies x on the right-hand side, which is 0. And whatever multiply the other exponents of x, starting at x squared and x cubed and x to the fourth and so on and so forth, has to be equal to whatever multiplied those on the right-hand side. So, and a n plus 2 times m plus 2 square 
plus a n should be equal to zero. And that means that a n plus two divided by a n is equal to minus one to the uh, divided by n plus two squared. And that is the other recurrence, well, that's the only recurrence relationship. This is not a recurrence relation. This is just a solution. So since a1 is equal to zero, so since a1 is equal to zero, then all the odd terms, a3, a5, a7, a9, and so on and so forth, are also equal to zero according to this relationship, right? So if you plug in n equal one, then you have a3 divided by a1 is equal to this. So a3 will be this multiplied times a1, and a1 is equal to 0. So you get that. So every two uh, elements of the series, or every two coefficients of the series, are governed by these relations. And now the, the even terms, so for n equals 0, for example, we have a2 divided by a0 is equal to minus 1 divided by 2 squared. So at n equals 0, we have 2 squared. Um, for n equal 2, we have a4 divided by a2 is equal to minus 1 divided by 2 plus 2 squared, which is equal to minus 1 divided by 2 times 2 squared. And a4, a4 divided by a0 is equal to 1 divided by 2 squared, 2 times 2 squared. So I can continue with n equal 4, and I can say a6 divided by a4 is equal to minus 1 divided by 4 plus 2 squared, which is equal to minus 1 divided by 3 times 2 squared. So 4 plus 2 is 6. It's the same as 3 times 2. And then a6 divided by a0 should be equal to minus 1 divided by 3 times 2 squared, 2 times 2 squared, 2 squared, and so on and so forth. You can see this will, this is a 2, by the way, not a 1. And what happens is that you can establish that relation for the first solution. Remember that the initial equation gave you repeated index, so we have the first solution of the series, y1, is the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n plus k, that's at k equals 0, and that led to the following, y1 of x is a series that started at a0, which is the common coefficient of all these recurrence relations, times 1 minus x squared divided by 2 squared, plus 1 divided by 2 times 2 squared, x to the 4 divided by 2 squared, minus 1 divided by, so it's plus minus plus minus, as you can see, the um, index uh, or the sign flips, x to the 6 divided by 2 to the 6, plus, minus, so on and so forth. So this recurrence relation can be easily collapse into a single series that goes like this, n equals 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the power of n, that flips the sign, so when n is equal to odd, this is minus 1, when n is equal to even, this is plus 1, but remember the odd terms in the polynomial don't exist, so we will solve that by by taking the power of, uh, of 2n. Then we have n factorial square, x divided by 2, to the power of 2n. So this power of 2n actually ensures that every term in the series is an even term polynomial. This produces the flipping sign, and n factorial squares is the denominator here, 2 times 2 squared, 3 times 2 squared, 4 times 2 squared, and so on and so forth. So this right here is the first solution to this equation. There's two solutions, remember. So we have repeated index, so we cannot simply use the same. And this is a series solution. Again, uh, you've probably never seen this before, but this is actually, this actually has a name. This right here, without the a0, is called the j0x, is the best cell function of 
the first kind of order zero. And it's called of order zero because remember we started this entire derivation by assuming that the order of the equation was nu equals zero. Right? And that is a series, it's an infinite series. You can try to plot it, right? As an infinite series, obviously you cannot go to MathCAD or MATLAB or Excel. You can try to plot a series, but you have to truncate it at some point. But it's okay to truncate it because notice that this, the denominator is so, so large. It's not only a factorial, but it's a factorial square. So this number will vanish real quick. As soon as you get to the fifth term on this series, this number is actually huge. So it will actually eat at eat away at the longer at the larger terms in the series. Okay. Now you don't need to evaluate these using the series summation or the summation. Uh, or you just can just plot j zero of x. In most mathematical spreadsheets, as you have, for example, a sine and a cosine, or a tangent, or a logarithm, or an exponential function, or a cosine hyperbolic, and so on and so forth, already pre-programmed as embedded functions. The Bessel functions, in the same way I spoke about the Legendre functions, the Bessel functions are all already also pre-programmed as implicit functions. You can say j of x, and it will automatically know that, that you're referring to the um, to the Bessel function of the first kind. All right. So if you plot this solution, this is what you're going to find. So this is why. This is x. This function evaluates to 1 at x equals 0. And then it oscillates around the x-axis. And it oscillates not with an even frequency, as a sine or a cosine would do. It would oscillate forever. But these roots these intersections with the x-axis actually bunch up together closer and closer as you move in the x direction. So this is j, 0 of x. And these right here, the roots, we're going to call this mu, 0, 1, which is the root of the Bessel function of order 0, root number 1. This will be root number 2 of the Bessel function of order 0. This will be root number 3. This will be root number 4. This will be root number five, root number six, and there's infinite number of them. Okay, and they're already pre-programmed too. You can uh, find out where the roots in a mathematical spreadsheet, the roots mu q n, uh, the nth root of the qth order Bessel function. Now remember that because we initial equation gave rise to a repeated solution, k1 is equal to 0 and k2 is equal to 0, the solution y2 is basically derived directly from y1. So the second solution k1, remember k2 are both equal 0. The second solution, when you have repeated index, and we learned this from Frobenius solutions, is y1 times the log of x plus x summation from n equals 0 to infinity dn x to the n. So they would have to take these, plug it back into the ODE, and find out a recurrence relationship for dn. And I'm not going to go through that process, but this lead, leads to leading, leading to y2 is the following. It's 2 over pi, the log of x2 plus gamma times j0 of x, which is, remember, the Bessel function of the first kind of order 0, plus the summation from n equal 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the power of n plus 1 x to the 2n divided by 2 to the 2n n factorial square 
times 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over n. So that's the uh, fractional series inside the summation. So this complicated looking equation, I'm going to frame it like this. And that whole thing is the actually capital Y zero of X is the Bessel function of the second kind of order zero. Still order zero because we're solving the order zero equation. Uh, remember the gamma is 0 0.57, uh, there's another 7, 2, it's an irrational number, so an infinite number of decimals. It's the Euler constant. Okay, And if you plot this equation, I'm going to plot it here. Um, this is x. This actually has an asymptote at x equals 0. It goes to minus infinity because of the log. And then it goes up, and then it crosses the x-axis an infinite number of times. But again, those roots actually bunch up. So it reduces in, in amplitude, and the frequency increases as it goes. So these roots are actually bunched up together as you go. So... This one is singular at x equals 0. As expected, the solution has to be singular at x equals 0 because the original equation was singular at x equals 0. Or we expect it to be that way. So, essentially, the equation x squared dy, I'm sorry, d square y dx squared plus x dy dx plus x squared y of x is equal to 0 has solutions, general solution, y of x is equal to some constant of integration c1 times j0 plus constant of integration j2 of c2 times y0 of x, where these j and y Remember, are the Bessel functions of the first kind and the second kind of order zero. And again, those are functions that are derived or defined by these series summations, by these power series. Uh, but in they're already pre-programmed in most mathematical spreadsheets. So you can just simply uh, just query what j is at x equal whatever, and you get an answer. Now we can do this for um, higher order, easy to do this for higher order equations, apply the same methodology. So for Bessel equation of order nu, We have x squared, the second y dx squared, plus x dy dx, plus x squared minus nu squared, y of x is equal to 0. Then you can rewrite this as the second y dx squared plus 1 over x dy dx, plus x squared minus nu squared over x squared of y of x is equal to zero. And then this is your px. This one here is your qx. And you go through the same process, determine p minus one, determine q minus two. Um, and then what's going to happen is that these are the solution. Okay, let's, let's just write the whole thing. Uh, so p minus one, 
is equal to the limit when x goes to 0 of x times px, which is 1 over x, and that's equal to 1. And q minus 2 is the limit when x goes to 0 of x squared times q, which is this entire thing. So the x squared and the x squared go away, and that leads to minus nu squared. So they're both finite. That means that this is a regular singularity. So the initial equation will look like k times k minus 1 plus k p minus 1 plus q minus 2 is equal to 0. And this leads to an equation that is k squared minus nu squared equals 0. And that basically means that k1 is equal to nu and k2 is equal to minus nu. So there's the two answers to the initial equation. So now you can determine y1 and y2. So you go to the same process, derive the um, recurrence relation, and you end up with a long power series with a long recurrence relation. And then you have if nu is different than an integer. If nu is different than an integer, then y1 of x, which is, remember, the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, a n times x to the n plus nu, is equal to j nu of x. Okay, so it's the Bessel function of the first kind of order nu. And y2 of x, which is the power series but using the second root, x to the n minus nu, will be j minus nu of x times the coefficient a0. In both cases, it will, you'll have the coefficient a0 in front, but you get the point. So, where j nu of x is the Bessel function of order of the first kind of order nu. Now, and obviously this one will be the Bessel function of the first kind of order minus nu. Again, it's a well-established function, like the sine, like the cosine, which you can just simply evaluate. But it comes from a power series. If nu is an integer, then you can show that y1 of x is equal to the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of a n x to the n plus nu. Same thing that you did before. And that would be j nu of x, so, or constant times j nu of x, and y2 of x will be some a times y1 of x times the log of x plus the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of dn x to the n plus nu, not minus nu, and that would be the Bessel function of the second kind of order nu, where again Capital Y nu of x is the Bessel function of uh, the second kind of order nu. Now, if we want to, if you're interested in knowing what these functions look like in the power series, where the recurrence relation looks like, j nu is simply minus 1 to the power of n, so there's a flipping sign. x divided by 2 to the power of 2n plus nu, so now we have a fr potentially a fractional power, right? But it's only on the even terms, even terms are plus a fraction, potentially a fraction, remember that nu could potentially be an integer, n plus nu factorial, n factorial. Okay, so this is This is if nu is equal to an integer. 
Now, if nu is not equal to an integer, this on the denominator looks a little bit differently because you different because you cannot take the factorial of a non-integer non number. But there is a function that is equivalent to taking the factorial of a non-integer number, and that's called the gamma function, 2n plus nu, of the gamma function of n plus nu plus 1 times n factorial. And this is how j looks like if nu is not equal to an integer. Okay. The gamma function uh, such that is the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the y e to the minus x dx. This is gamma function. And the gamma function is equivalent to the gamma y plus 1 is equivalent to gamma to y factorial if y is equal to an integer. Okay, now, and I'm going to write here the vessel function of the second kind of order nu. It's a much longer series. It's 2 over pi j nu of the log of x plus the order constant gamma minus 1 over pi summation from k equals 0 to nu minus 1, n minus k minus 1 factorial divided by k factorial, x over 2 to k minus nu, minus 1 over pi, summation, n equals 0 to infinity, minus 1, and h of k plus h of k plus nu, k factorial, k plus nu factorial, x over 2, 2 to the k plus nu. This is minus nu and this is plus nu. Let's just frame this whole thing. Again, this is 2k minus nu and uh, such that this function h of n is that fractional series is the summation from j equal 1 to n of 1 over j so that's how the series for the um, Bessel function of the second kind of order nu looks like, but again, we don't need to evaluate that series in, under any circumstances. If you want to do it, just to show what it looks like, but you can just evaluate it because this function is already pre-programmed, again, like the sine or the logarithm, or it's already pre-programmed in most, if not all, mathematical spreadsheets. Um, it's in Excel, you have to install special mathematical modules to be able to evaluate these special functions, but in MathCAD or MATLAB or Mathematica, Wolfram, you can always just directly evaluate Bessel functions like this. Obviously, this one is a uh, function that's singular. That so would evaluate like the one for order zero. It would evaluate to minus infinity at x equals zero. So the y's will look like this, and the j's will look like this. All right. Again, they all have the same type of structure. These are functions that are um, that oscillate forever. They have an infinite number of roots. The roots are not equally distanced. Actually, they bunch up together. The frequency increases as it goes, and the amplitude decreases as it goes. In addition to that, there are some special properties that you can use. Properties of Bessel functions. And these properties of Bessel functions allow you to relate one to the other. 
Um, the Bessel function of the first kind of order nu plus 1 of x is equal to 2 nu x j nu of x minus j nu minus 1 of x. So you can relate um, multiple order Bessel functions this way. Um, that's property number one. Also, the derivative with respect to x of the Bessel function of order nu, of the first kind of order nu, is equal to one half j nu minus one of x minus j nu plus one of x. It's another interesting property that will become very useful as we look at equations in engineering like the heat equation or the wave equation um, in which these functions will appear in many instances. So you can use this for example to say what is the derivative with respect to x of j0 of x. So at nu equals 0 you have nu minus 1 and nu, and nu plus 1 uh, and this would be minus j1 of x. Okay, so you can combine these two to end up with these relationships. So basically this says that the derivative of j0 with respect to s with respect to x is one half of j minus one of x minus j plus one of x. And then you can use this one to relate j minus one and j plus one to j to j one uh, with two nu over x. And as you use the combination of these two. In addition, I'm going to plot these again, but I'm going to plot equations or functions of different order. Um, so this is y right here. So again, remember this is j0. So this will be j0. And then j1 will start at 0. And then j2 will start at 0 as well. Longer frequency, smaller amplitude. So this is j1. This is j2 of x. And they're all bounded by this line right here. So technically these, these should have actually gone as far as these, but they're bounded by this line, uh, bounded by 1 over the square root of x. So the maximum, the peaks of each of these functions are actually bounded by this line. And then the y functions, order the, the Bessel functions of the second kind, they're all singular at x equals 0. So this will be y0, as we already saw. This will be y1, slightly larger frequency, I'm sorry, larger period, um, smaller frequency, and smaller amplitude. So this is y1 of x, capital Y, and then the other one also singular, so this is y2 of x, and so on and so forth. They all have infinite number of roots. They all have this property of at least the y's of being singular at x equals zero. They all increase in frequency as x progresses and bunch up. So we can 
generalize the equation. Um, there's a generalized version of this equation that I uh, might get to it. Yes, I can, I can get to that. Um, so if the equation looks like x squared, the second y dx squared plus x dy dx plus m squared x squared minus nu squared y of x is equal to zero. So it's just the first equation that we wrote. It's sort of like the general uh, Bessel equation of order nu, which we have the additional m there that would appear also in many instances. Then the solution would look like this c1 j nu of mx, so that's where the m will show up in the argument, c2 j minus nu of mx, if nu is an integer, it's not an integer, or c1 j nu of mx plus c2 y nu of mx, if nu is an integer. Also, we can modify, so let me fix that. Modified Bessel function or Bessel equation. of order nu and the modified equation looks like this x squared the y the square y dx squared plus x the y dx minus m square x square plus nu square y of x is equal to zero Okay, so what happens if we have a minus sign? Right? Imagine this was a, a, an equation with constant coefficient, a second order equation with constant coefficient. Right? And imagine for an instant that this wasn't there. So imagine that this was x squared and this was just m squared. The solution to this will be cosine of mx, sine of mx, right? If there's a plus. If there was a minus and these terms didn't exist, these terms didn't exist, right? and all we had here was an m squared, then the solution will be e to the mx plus e to the minus mx. Okay, so we'll have trigonometric or exponential depending on the plus sign or the minus sign. Now the same thing will happen to Bessel equations. You'll have the Bessel equations, remember, look like trigonometric functions. They're infinite, um, infinite uh, uh, oscillating functions that have infinite number of roots. Okay, as opposed to trigonometric functions, they're Roots are not equally distant, distanced. Um, they their frequency changes as you progress in the x direction, and in the case of trigonometric functions, you have their counterpart, which are the exponential functions, which are related to each other by the Euler's relationship. You can very easily relate exponential functions to trigonometric functions, and vice versa. Now the same thing occurs here. If you let c equals to i x. So that c squared is equal to minus x squared. So you do a complex transformation. Then this equation will look like c squared, d squared y, d, I'm sorry, dz squared, plus z dy dz, plus m squared z squared minus nu squared y of z is equal to zero. So if we do this very simple transformation, then we'll make this equation look exactly like the general Bessel equation. So I'm going to call this one general Bessel equation of order nu. Let me. And this is the modified Bessel equation of order nu. So all I need to do is do that complex transformation to end up with the same equation whose solution y of z is equal to c1 times j nu of mz plus c2 of j minus nu of mz 
or C1 J nu of Mz plus C2 Y nu of Mz. And that's if nu is not an integer. And this is if nu is an integer. So, basically, this means that y of x should be equal to c1 times j nu of i mx plus c2 times j minus nu of i mx or c1 is j nu of i mx plus c2 y nu of i mx. So all I have to do is change the argument back to uh, the complex version or the imaginary version in this case. Again, this is for nu not equal to an integer. And this is if nu is equal to an integer. Now, how do, how do I evaluate something that has a uh, relationship this way? A, that something, a function that has this imaginary argument. Well, I can define a new function so that if, for example, j nu of i mx is equal to the summation from, I'm going to just expand it into the, its original series by, by replacing the argument x with, with the argument i m x is minus 1 to the power of n, i to the power of 2n plus nu, m x divided by 2, 2n plus nu, and n factorial and the gamma function of n plus nu plus 1. So basically j nu of i m x is equal to i nu the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of um, I think uh, yes the minus 1 to the power of n times i to the power of 2n they combine into i to the power of nu uh, because remember odd powers uh, even powers of i is minus 1 and odd powers of i are um, i so it goes like i uh, minus i uh, oh, i minus 1 uh, minus i and 1 so that's, those are the powers of i and then here i have uh, mx divided by 2 to the power of 2n plus nu n factorial the gamma function of n plus nu plus 1 and we call this i nu of mx so basically the Bessel function of the first kind of order nu with an imaginary argument becomes the modified Bessel function of the first kind of order nu with a real argument. So it's just a transformation. So where I knew is the modified Bessel function of the first kind of order no. All right. Now, similarly, y nu of i m x becomes k nu of m x. So we can do the same complex transformation where k nu is the modified Bessel function of the second kind of order nu. No. So the solution to this equation is simply y x is equal to c1 times i nu of mx plus c2 
times i minus nu of mx or c1 i nu of mx plus c2 times y nu of mx that is if nu is not an integer if nu is an integer so the solution in terms of now the modified Bessel functions and what happens with these functions if you plot them is that I zero will start at one and will be a function that will do this and this is i0 of x and this will be i1 of x and then this will be i2 of x and then this will be i3 of x so notice that these are akin to exponential functions these functions do not are not oscillative functions they don't have they don't have any roots they are not they don't have infinite roots or any roots at all and the k functions are singular functions at x equals zero so this will be k zero of x this is k one k one k two and so on and so forth so this is this relationship between uh, j and i and uh, y and k is analogous I'm going to say analogous to Euler's formula that relates trigonometric functions to exponential functions with complex arguments. This is the famous Euler's formula. Right? So as you can see, you can transform between an exponential function with a complex argument to trigonometric function with uh, real arguments, and vice versa. You can do exactly the opposite. You can transform from trigonometric functions with complex arguments. If you replace theta uh, with uh, i alpha, then this i will go away. It will be to the minus alpha, and so on and so forth. So you can replace. You can do the opposite transformation. So this is this is how it goes. Um, There's also a generalized vessel function we call it the we call the previous one the general vessel equation there's also the generalized vessel equation And that one looks like this, x squared, the second y dx squared, plus ax dy dx, plus b squared x squared y of x. So again, the powers of the coefficients, so the variable coefficients are the same, second order, first order, second order. It's just that we have these coefficients a and b squared there. And this one has solutions. y of x equals c1 x nu j nu of bx plus c2 x nu j minus nu of bx if nu is not an integer or c1 x nu j nu of bx plus c2 x nu y nu of bx if nu is an integer. In this case, nu is 1 minus a over 2. Okay. Notice that there's no nu in the, in the equation, but we can make that uh, uh, particular transformation as nu goes as 1 minus a over 2 and use the order nu 
solutions. So similarly, the following equation arises in fin applications of different cross-section functions. So we can get an equation that looks sort of like this. The dx of x to the alpha dy dx. So we get the uh, alpha order, uh, the second order term will have the x to the alpha coefficient, then the x to the alpha minus 1 coefficient with the first order, uh, if we chain rule this out, plus alpha square x to the beta y of x. So if you are given this general equation that doesn't look at all like a Bessel equation because you have you don't have the second order, second, second order polynomial coefficient like you have here, the first order polynomial and the second order polynomial, but you have these generalized uh, order polynomials here, then there is a, a way to do a variable transformation that will lead to a solution. So there will be a case one. If by beta minus alpha plus two is different than zero, means alpha is greater than zero and beta is greater than zero. So both alpha and beta have to be greater or equal than zero and this relationship must be true then y of x is equal to c1 x to the nu over mu j nu of mu gamma x to the 1 over mu plus c2 x to the nu over mu j minus nu of mu gamma x to the 1 over mu or c1 x to the nu over mu j nu nu gamma x to the 1 over mu plus c2 x to the nu over mu y nu mu gamma x to the 1 over mu and again this is uh, the first solution here this is if nu is not an integer, and this one is if nu is an integer. And basically nu is, and gamma and mu are defined like this. Mu is 2 over beta minus alpha plus 2, and nu is equal to minus mu alpha minus 1 divided by 2. So, and this is a lot of information, but this is all the possible cases that you can arrive at with modifications of the generalizations of the Bessel equation that will occur anytime you have a different specific application of, of problems. Of this nature. So if gamma square is less than zero, that means that gamma is imaginary. So gamma, remember, is part of the original equation. So if you have a negative number here, that means you have a solution that doesn't oscillate. So if you have a, a second order equation with the zeroth order term is positive, then you have a solution that oscillates. Okay, this is a wave equation, the solution will oscillate. If you have a negative number, then the solution will not oscillate. And uh, what happens is that J nu turns into I nu, and Y nu turns into K nu. It turns into the modified Bessel functions of the first and second kind. So you can just replace J with I and Y with K. And then case two, would be what 
what if beta minus alpha plus 2 is equal to 0? Beta is equal to alpha minus 2. So in that case, then we have a, an additional initial equation, m squared, alpha minus 1 times m, plus gamma squared is equal to 0, leading to m1 and 2, two roots for m. Um, so we have an initial equation to the original equation, and this is basically the Cauchy, the Cauchy Euler's equation. So again, if m1 is different than m2, then the solution would be c1 times x to the m1 plus c2 times x to the m2. Okay. If m1 is equal to m2, which is equal to m, then y of x is equal to c1 x to the m plus c2 x to the m log of x. And if m is equal to mu plus minus i beta, so if m has a complex conjugate solution, or this equation is complex, or doesn't have a real argument, y of x is c1 x to the nu, for mu, times beta cosine of the log of x, plus c2 x to the mu, plus or times beta sine of log of x. So that is the all possible combinations of the solution. And notice that in this case, this case is the same as the Euler Cauchy equation, which was the first equation that we looked at, uh, of, so first of the second order variable coefficient for narrow differential equations that we looked at that had these non series solutions. The rest of them. We have no hope but to end up with a series solution that's either direct series solution application if the functions p and q are non-singular or Frobenius uh, series solution method if the uh, functions p and q and differential equation are regular have regular singularities at the point of application or at the point of expansion so this is it i, I wanted to devote the entire class today to uh, the Bessel equation and the possible solutions of the Bessel equations of the different forms of the Bessel equation. Again, it's it's it's, uh, it's important to to have and to 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 uh, look into this as a generalized as the most generalized form of the, of the Bessel equation. But always remember that if you have a second order equation, this is a second order term, right? You can uh, chain rule this out, and you have x to the alpha times the second derivative of y plus x to the alpha minus 1 times the first derivative of, of y with respect to x, plus the zeroth order term. Now, if the zeroth order term happens to be positive, you end up with oscillative solutions in terms of j and y, as if you would, in the case of constant coefficients equations, you end up with sines and cosines. And if this number were to be negative, then you end up with solutions that do not oscillate, solution, solutions in terms of k and i, the, the modified Bessel functions of the first and the first kind, first and second kind. As if you would, in the case of equations with constant coefficients, you end up with uh, exponential solutions, or cosine hyperbolic, sine hyperbolic, which is the same thing as an exponential solution. So um, keep that into, in mind when we uh, generalize all this, this entire formulation to uh, partial differential equations because the same logic will, will apply in partial differential equations. So that's what we're going to do in the next uh, phase of the semester, the next portion of the semester. Start looking at, well, what do we do if we have more than one dimension, or if we have one dimension in time, um, how do we go about solving that equation? So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next class, next portion of the semester. Goodbye.